Okay, good morning. I want to um, use this video here to show you how to write the 137 uh, program C, which is the mastermind program. Uh, this particular program obviously is going to give you a good idea on how the other two programs work. Uh, however, just so you know, uh, obviously I'll be showing you this code because it's, it's uh, very helpful to understand uh, for loops and how they work. And so I want you to use this as a guide for how you should accomplish A or B. So if you're still behind on 137, uh, by submitting the program that I'm going to make in this video, uh, that will not count, just so you know. However, like I said, use this video as suggestions or for suggestions to uh, figure out how to do the hangman and lottery picks, which are far and by and far much easier than this particular mastermind program. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I don't have the document in front of me. I don't remember what exactly they call the function, but I'm going to go ahead and just define it as mastermind, and then we're going to go with the guess and the secret as the arguments. Okay. So now, in this particular function, first before we um, get too far into the programming, I just want to leave a couple of comments or doc string in this case of how uh, this program works. Okay. And also at the same time, I would like to remind you on how mastermind works. Mastermind works by generating a up to five sequence. Uh, set of character, set of colors, excuse me, uh, that are in a particular order, and the user has to guess what um, has to guess what the password is, and they're given hints every time they make a guess. That guess is, or sorry, that that information they get is how many of the five, up to five, are exactly right, and if the ones that are wrong, how many are the correct color. So like think of it as right color, wrong spot. So our function has to return that information whenever the guess and secret are, are called in here. So returns number of exactly correct pegs and number of incorrect pegs slash right color. Okay, so that's my doc string. Okay? And um, that, of course, when I, when I run the program and try to call the function, that's what will come up. Now, what do we want to do here? In order to accomplish this particular um, uh, function, you have to use a list of flags. Okay, this is our first uh, uh, foray into using flags in Python. So the way we're going to use this, I'm going to call it flag, and I'm going to make a list of ones. Okay, flag one, 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 one. Now, there's a reason we're going to do that, okay? Because I want to keep track of when the colors are correct. So, what I'm using the flags for is to kind of uh, accomplish that goal. And the flags obviously can handle up to sequence of five. So, even if you have less than this, um, it's going to uh, it's going to be usable in the program. I'm just going to leave a comment on here. Start with flags at one, so they can be put down when the when a peg is correct or wrong color uh, wrong wrong position okay so I'm gonna have the program first to do is I'm gonna have it loop through this the the, uh, the secret and since the secret is a list of a list of elements I'm going to have it loop through it like this okay for a in secret and what I'm gonna do is oops I really forgot the colon what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it basically go through the secret and see if the current element in guess matches up with the secret. Okay, So what I'm going to do for that, for A in secret, since A is of course a stepper, I'm going to check and see if guess of A in secret. Okay. Okay, sorry, one of the things I forgot to do was before I went, I, because A is obviously going to be taking the value from secret, so A is not a number. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to have a separate counter. And I'm going to, actually, no, I take that back. I'm going to have a separate counter. Instead of separating through secret, I'm going to use the length of the secret as my loop through. So A is going to be a number starting at zero and is going to go through the length of secret. So guess of A is in secret A. So in other words, it's just basically going to say, matter of fact, instead of using the in function, I'm going to actually use the Boolean expression because the first thing we're going to do is guess to see if it's, see if it's, uh, see if it's exactly correct. Okay. So guess of A is in secret A. What we're going to do? We're going to flag of A set it equal to zero. And the reason we do that is because we now know that that peg is exactly correct, 
And so I'm going to also, uh, up here, I'm going to initialize a variable, two variables actually, and we're going to call it exact equals zero and color equals zero. And what I'm going to do is every time it finds a uh, peg that, or a, a color that is exactly correct and in the correct spot, in other words, it's going to add one to exact. And then, of course, we're going to print out those that information later. So flag, we're going to turn the flag down and then change it to exact plus equals one. Okay, and then that is basically that actually is pretty easily going to happen. And now what I'm going to do is I just want to test it, make sure that it's going to work as intended because I'm kind of writing this on the fly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call Mastermind. I'm going to put in a sequence of uh, colors that have a couple of exactly correct ones, and I have to put it in as a list. And what I normally would do is actually assign this list uh, to a variable before I uh, before I were was to um, call it in as a list, because obviously it's harder to type in a list as an argument than it is to uh, type in a variable. So. Okay, so my guess is going to be red, blue, purple. I'm just going to use three, three, three for this one. And then my secret is going to be, I'm going to have the red one be correct. I'm going to have the purple one be incorrect. And then I'm going to have a yellow in there. Okay. And then that's all it should do is if it works correctly, this will return. I also just realized I don't have a return on here. So I'm going to have, have it print. I'm just going to be a temporary line. Uh, you have plus str of exact plus exactly right. And this is the old print print function. So if you want to use the old format that you have to use or the new format you have to use the firm future. So this should work as intended. Let's just make sure. Yep. Okay. So let's go ahead and try that code now. So mastermind of uh, purple. I forgot I should have stored the run command there. That's okay. Red making it up again. Blue and then that's the guess, and then the secret is going to be purple, yellow, and red. Okay, close. All right, so int object is not iterable. So I got an error, and what, it, what I got the error in was that <clears throat> I, can't, I can't do it as a length of secret. I guess having a length of a uh, list is is not going to do unless I try it as a range, in which case I could do. Let's find out. Zero to len of secret. Let's see if that works. Let's try that. Okay, run that again. All right. So I also have to throw in some space on there. So, but it does. But it does work. Uh, let me just get it clear so it works. Uh, as you can see, what it works. And then if I were to change the guess to make two correct. It should, yep. Okay, so that portion of the code is working as intended. Okay, so we have the uh, looping through the length of the secret, zero to length of secret, using the range function to do it. That was what I missed uh, the first time. And then just basically checking each element to see if it's exactly correct. That's the easy part. Okay, now the hard part is going to be having to check to see if the if they're in the wrong position. Okay, so I'm going to set. Um, a equal to, actually I'm going to have it, uh, I don't even have to do that. I'm going to have it be looping through, again, zero, len of secret. So the loop is going to look very similar. And I probably could almost code it exactly, but the difference is I don't want it to double count. So I'm having it two separate checks for the, I'm having two separate checks for the exactly right and the colors to make sure that um, it doesn't accidentally double count them. And that's why also we turn that flag down on uh, on the sequence once once we have uh, have it exactly right that way it's not checking okay so here's what we do what we're gonna do is as we loop through we're going to see if the flag is up for that uh, for that one okay so flag of a if it equals one double equals one what do we do okay if the flag of a equals double double equals one we're going to determine if <clears throat> the guess in that element is in the secret somewhere else, okay? But only if the flag is actually up. So we're going to uh, check that uh, in this way. If the if the guess of a, actually, I take that back. We're going to actually have to loop through and again to double check to see if 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 it works. So I'm going to make a new counter for b 
in range of zero len of secret. Same deal. Okay, so this is a loop within a loop. I'm going to determine if the let's see, I'm going to make sure I, I word this correctly for the video. If the um, guess of B, if the guess of B is equal to or in, I should say, in the secret and, and I shouldn't capitalize that, and flag of B double equals one. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one little, uh, actually a little large change. Actually, um, I have the uh, obviously I only want to check to see if the, it's in a different spot, uh, only if the flag is equal to one. But what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to uh, have it loop through the. Um, range and Ellen secret, that's fine. I want to actually see, instead of this, I want to see if guess of B is double equal to um, secret, sorry, guess of A, and that's double equal to secret of B, which would be obviously in a different spot. But also, if the flag of flag was what two G's in that? Oops. Uh, and the flag of D double equals one, just to make sure, right? And if that's true, so here's what this is going. What's going on here? Okay, this might be a little hard to follow because it's a loop and a loop here. Um, what it's checking to see is if the current guess value in the loop since we're going by length of secret. So if in other words we're in the first spot this A would be zero. So it would be the first element in, 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 uh, in A. Because we've already have made it impossible for A to check itself in the same spot because we already have eliminated that possibility. Remember this is only going to happen if the flag is actually up which means that that has not been counted. So what we're going to do is if the flag is up we're going to create a second loop and have it loop through again and we're just going to basically see if within there, if the if the guess that's in A is in a different spot, and at the same time, and I, I put D here, and I meant I meant B, sorry, and the flag of B is equal to one. So in other words, if the flag's up on the on the on the peg, and it's in a different spot, so A and B right at this point would be different spots. And remember, if it's the same spot, the flag should already be down because it was it, because this this loop would have caught it first. So what happens now is this, okay? So if the, this both cases are true, we're going to add to the color count. We're going to add to the color count, and then we're going to go ahead and set flag B double. Or, sorry, not not double equal, regular equal zero. Okay, and then we're going to then um, let it continue to loop, I believe. Okay, yep, that's true. All right, so this should work. This should work as it is, of course. Um, and we'll have to test it and make sure we work out any kinks. And then we're going to have it report the amount of colors. statement nice and clear. Okay, so let's try to run it and let's see what happens. Now, I'll use the uh, previous guess on here because this one has a uh, one exactly correct and it has one color in the wrong spot. So I should get one for each when I run this code. Let's see. I did. Okay. Of course, I would also, if I really wanted to work on this program, I would want to obviously have this say, you know, color um, in here, you know, grammatically correct. And if I run the other one, which had two correct, it should say two and zero. Perfect. Okay. So this program works as intended. Now, like I said before, if you were following along in the um, in class, the uh, person would have uh, sorry, the person. The um, reason why we weren't able to get this correct is because we we needed 
this line here, this flag, okay? And without having a, a sort of check, let's call it, um, then we would not have been able to uh, we would not have been able to get this correct. So so we, uh, we worked a long time on it to try to get it. Uh, but this particular code here, as long as you understand the for loops and the ideas behind how this was working, this is the code uh, that would work for the mastermind uh, program. So again, the lottery and hangman ones also have a good uh, make good use of for loops, and um, this hopefully will give you a, a good understanding of it. Uh, have a nice day.